Yeah. Okay, here we go. And we are live. So you can start. Thank you. Good afternoon, grade sevens. Welcome to reading and viewing today. So now you can read along with me as I go through our comprehensive activities and they're going to be based on our, the theme we're doing this week and the topic, which is advertising. OK, now I was very, very impressed when I looked at all your responses in the chat in the Q&A's and I was thrilled to keep that up because it's awesome getting that feedback to the questions. And today when I go through the answers, you'll be able to see how well you did. OK, so for today's lesson, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to, we're going to practice our pre-reading, we're going to answer questions about what we've read, share personal opinion, skim and scan, find facts, make inferences, and practice information and context clues. So sometimes you don't even know you're doing all these things while we're talking or while we're doing actually doing the lesson, but you are. And by your responses, I can clearly see that you are. So it's nice to see Tiana. Very, very good responses. And now I am going to mention the other names in a bit. Let's just go through what I need you to do today. When we are done with this lesson, you need to take the text that we're reading. You know that I do put it up on our website for you as well. I'm going to read aloud with appropriate pronunciation. Try and be fluent and with expression. And the only way to do that is to keep practicing. OK, reflects on text read. So what we're doing is we're thinking about what we have read and then we do a comprehension activity on it. So the that is basically what we did, um, what you probably do, have done a lot at school, except this week we're basing it on advertising. So I've got some awesome responses from Tiana. Well done, Kiandra, Mpo, Melisi, Amol. I got your name twice, you lucky. Lucky person, TJ, Elizabeth, Panolo. Let's see. And there was anonymous, but I had to include you even though I didn't know your name. Bailey and KB, I'm going to say KB. It's easier. So this was amazing to go in there and to see how you guys responded and answered the questions. It is absolutely brilliant and it just makes me enthusiastic and excited to be back. Remember I gave you, we talked about this ad and a lot of your answers is what I've been reading through and responding to. So if I'm going to actually go through it and I think you will see that a lot of you hit the nail on the head with this one. So to decide if the cereal would be a healthy choice by the information, why or why not? Well, peanut butter is healthy for you, okay? Corn is healthy for you. All right, but now it says sweet. So sweet, and it's got Hershey's cocoa, and Hershey's is a chocolate company. So there we see, okay, if something is sweet, how sweet is it? And we can't, they don't really give us the information on there to see that. Does the ad convince you to want to try it? Why or why not? So some of you said no, but you didn't give me a reason why. Some of you said yes, and you told me that you would buy it because you love the fact that there was a post inside. And to be honest, if there was a post of the latest movie in a cereal box, even if I didn't eat the cereal, I'd probably buy it just to have the poster. Okay, so definitely is appealing to children or people who are interested in that particular movie or series. So what is the message that General Mills wants to convey in this ad? So if you look carefully, you see there, Star Wars free movie poster. So they want to convey that you're getting something free if you buy the cereal. So, but they don't tell you how much the cereal costs. So you buy a cereal and you get something free. And that is how 
they get, attract your attention as well. So now some of you are asked if you had questions after reading the ad. So one of the questions is, well, first of all, there isn't a price in it. Second of all, at the bottom, I don't see the calories or whether it's got vitamins. I can't see if it's got minerals. It doesn't give me that information. OK, so that is something, especially if it's a parent buying for a child, they want to know that. So does the advertiser try to trick you into buying the cereal? Why or why not? Well, there is a bit of a trick. He's saying that the post is for free. But it might possibly be that the price is actually included in the cost of the cereal. So it's not really for free. It's just simply free because it's in the box. And it also, he put the six to collect. So if you keep buying the next six boxes, you can collect them. However, how do you know if you're getting the same poster in each box or a different one each time? You won't know that. So that to me is a bit tricky. OK, how does the advertiser convince you that you should try the cereal? Because he tells you it's sweet. It's got Hershey's chocolate in it and it's crunchy. And it says Reese's Puffs and it also says Reese's peanut butter. So I'm going to assume that Reese's peanut butter in some place is a popular make. And if Reese's peanut butter is a popular make and they have puffs or cereal called Reese's puffs, then maybe that's will convince you enough to buy it. OK, so. How who is the advertiser targeting and how do you know? All right, so it could be very well. It could be children, it could be adults. But because it's not like the previous ad that actually had caught like little cartoon owls in it, so you could see that it was kind of like cute. This one is Star Wars. Now, there are adults that are interested in Star Wars. There are boys that are interested in Star Wars. There are girls and they're all ages. So we can't really classify this as boy, girl and adults or children. So if you're faced with that kind of question, how do you answer it? And the best way to answer it is not to list girls, boys, adults, children, or everybody. Focus on what they're advertising. They're advertising Star Wars. So the best answer would be in this case to say that it is targeted to an audience who is interested or loves or follows Star Wars. OK, so you can actually use rather focus on that. Then it shows that you're really picking up the detail in the advert as well. Then I asked what were the first two things that caught your eye and why? And a lot of you said that it was the color. OK, so yes, the orange and the yellow definitely do stand out. It is bright and it does catch your eye and it's kind of like gives you that happy feeling, the yellow, all sunny and bright. And it catches your eye because they use bright colors and big writing. And the word free also is enlarged and it's got a it's black, got a black backdrop behind the free. So it really makes it pop. OK, so that will definitely catch anyone's eye. And what is the ad for the cereal not telling you what is missing? So yeah, we did we did refer to that and we said that we don't see the health benefits. We don't see the nutritional value. We don't see how is it good for you? Are there vitamins in there? Are there minerals in there? All right, so that is actually a very important thing that you should have on your ad. It shouldn't be left off. OK, so most of the answers that I've given you is the feedback I got from you guys. So. Thumbs up. Well done. I'm very proud of you. Today, our comprehension is going to be about this advert. So look at it carefully. OK, so it says announcing Janelli's pizza. Are you tired of bland, boring pizza? Are you looking for pizza with pizzazz? 
look no further. Janelle's incredible pizza will knock your socks off with your very first taste. Our pizza is out of this world. Our flavorful sauce packs a punch with its exotic combination of spices. Made with love, our hand-tossed dough yields the lightest, crispiest, crunchiest crust you've ever known. Once you try our pizza, you'll quit eating your old, boring pizza cold turkey. Do yourself a favor. Come to Janelli's Pizza with an open mind and an appetite. We'll guarantee you'll be a lifetime fan of Janelli's with your first bite. Okay, so that's the ad. Now the spelling's a bit different because it is an American ad. Okay, so they spell things like flavorful a bit different than we do. Okay, so just kind of bear that in mind when you're writing and spelling things down. Okay, so we don't write flavorful, we add a U when we do. All right, so look at that ad and see. We have to now study it in order to answer it. What, let's look at the word bland. What is the meaning? I hope you're taking notes because in our queer comprehension questions, we are going to be looking at these very things. So what do you think in the context of this advert? What is the meaning of bland? And if you look, let's go to the very first sentence. Are you tired of bland, boring pizza? So in the context of that sentence, what does bland mean? What is the main idea? There's an idea they are trying to get forward to you. What is the main idea? Do they only serve pizza? Is there anything special about this ad? Knock your socks off. What on earth do they mean by knock your socks off? Packs a punch. How does it packs a punch? What do they mean by that? Packs a punch. Pizzazz is that same as pizza? Synonym for exotics. So you guys remember what synonyms are? Well, we're going to test that now. A synonym for the word exotic. So it says in the if you look in the thicker paragraph, in the second sentence, our flavorful sauce packs a punch with its exotic combination of spices. So what can be another word for exotic? What do they mean by cold turkey? Once you try pizza, you'll quit eating your old boring pizza, cold turkey. Open mind. Why did they use open mind? Come to Janelli's Pizza with an open mind and an appetite. Why would they want to ask you that? What does that mean? Okay, so now I'm just going to go back. I'm going to give you a second to just have a look at all of those and see if you can jot down some notes or type in some answers of various ones that you've thought of. And I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Okay, so now we're actually going to look at the questions. And I've put the post on the side so that you can see it as we're looking at the questions. Now these questions are multiple choice. It's a bit easier to do that. And remember when you do answer questions um, to a comprehension and it gives you the number and you answer it on the chat, just say one, and then your answer. So we know which question you're talking about. Okay, and it's, and it's easier for me to look at your feedback if you do that. 
So that would be awesome. Right, number one, what is the main idea of this ad? Some pizza is boring. Janelli serves the best pizza. Pizza is healthy food. So what is the main idea of this ad? You can write it down or you can type it in your chat. Q and A's. What is the main idea of this ad? A, B or C? Question two. What does Janelli's Pizza serve besides pizza? So do they serve anything else besides pizza? Turkey, salad, or neither of the above? So check the ad, have a read through the advert and see if they serve anything other than pizza. Okay, question three. What is special about the crust of Janelli's pizza? So, so there's something they think is special about it. it. It is deep dish, it is soft, it is shaped by hand. So what makes their pizza more special than anyone else's? A, B or C. It is deep dish, it is soft, it is shaped by hand. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few seconds to just jot that down and we're going to go to the next page. At least you can just write A, B and C. One, A, B or C. Two, A, B or C. Three, A, B or C. You don't have to actually type out the entire answer. Okay, so let's go to the second page. Question four, what does bland mean? A, is it mild, B, creamy, C, sweet? So according to the advert, what does bland mean? So you can just type in four and say A, B or C. So which word doesn't mean the same as pizzazz. So which word, look carefully at the question. It is not asking you which word does mean the same as pizzazz. It's asking you which word doesn't. So you have A, zest, B, intelligence, C, excitement. Question six, which word is a synonym for exotic? So which word means the same as exotic? Is it A, unusual, B, ordinary, C, expensive? Which word means the same or is a synonym for exotic? So now we go to our last page of questions for this advert. Question seven, which expression doesn't mean the same as knock your socks off? So we've got injure, amaze you or thrill you. So which expression does not mean the same as knock your socks off? So you've got to think, okay, what does knock your socks off mean? And what's the opposite of that? So the answer will be the opposite of knock your socks off. Okay, so you can choose A to injure you, B amaze you, or C to thrill you. Question eight, 
What does it mean to quit something called turkey? So when you, if you look at the ad, it says once you try our pizza, you'll quit eating your old boring pizza called turkey. So does it mean A, to stop eating turkey that is cold? B, to walk like a turkey that is cold? Or C, to stop a habit quickly and for good? So what does it mean to quit something called turkey? So you can just write eight and then A, B or C. Right, question nine. What does it mean to have an open mind about something? So if you have an open mind, according to the advert, it asks you to come to Janelli's Pizza with an open mind and an appetite. So is it A, to be willing to change your opinion, B, to be having brain surgery, C, neither of the above? So what does it mean to have an open mind about something? And the very last question, question 10. What does it mean if a source packs a punch? Packs a punch. OK, so if you go to the advert, it says our flavorful sauce packs a punch with its exotic combination of spices. So is it A, it is ready to take anywhere? B, it is very spicy? C, it is full of chunky vegetables? So what does it mean if a sauce packs a punch? So you can just write question 10 and your answer A, B or C. Okay, now we're going to go through the questions together and we're going to check if you were right with the answers. So I hope that on your chat you can go, I got it right, if you got them all right, not for each question, okay, just wait till the end. Or if you did well, you can give me a thumbs up. So let's have a look at our questions and go through them together. So we first approach the advert by looking at the main idea and details. So I asked you, what is the main idea of this ad? Is it A, B or C? Let's see if you're right. B, it means Janelli serves the best Pizza, because look, it says announcing Janelli's pizza. Janelli's incredible pizza. Come to Janelli's pizza. You'll be a lifetime fan of Janelli's. So they are trying to give you the idea that they serve the best pizza, and they do that by repeating their name continually. Okay. So that you don't easily forget it. Let's look at question two. What does Janelli's Pizza serve beside pizza? So do they serve anything else? Do they serve turkey? Do they serve salad? Or neither of the above? Do they not serve either of those things? Do they only serve pizza? Very good. They only serve pizza. They only talk about serving pizza in the advert. So what is special about the crust of Janelli's pizza? So it says made with love, our hand tossed dough yields the lightest, crispiest, crunchiest crust you've ever known. So you have three answers. It is deep dish, it is soft, it is shaped by hand. So does deep dish pop up in that sentence? Does soft pop up in the sentence? Or does shape by hand? or hand pop up in the sentence. There we go, well done. It is shaped by hand. It says hand tossed, which means they shape the dough by hand. Okay, now we're going to look at some of our vocabulary. What does bland mean? Is it mild, 
creamy or sweet? Now, I'm sure you have thought of other options in your mind that you could answer, but if you only had to choose from the, these three options, what would you say? It is mild because something that is creamy and something that is sweet is very tasteful and bland is something that is not tasteful. So the only word that comes the closest to being not tasteful is mild. Which word doesn't mean the same as pizzazz? Now in your previous, um, when we were going, breaking down the advert, I asked you what would be the synonym of pizzazz because I do think that that is an actual better question. However, if we look at zest, intelligent and excitement, to me, if I had to look at this, intelligence, is not pizzazz. Zest is if you do something with zest, you do it with excitement, so that could be pizzazz and excitement, definitely. So I actually circled excitement as a synonym of pizzazz. Okay, so I wanted to point that out to you. So pizzazz means excitement, so we could say that that is the synonym and intelligence is not a synonym. It's definitely not. OK, let's look at number six now. Which word is a synonym for exotic? So if something is exotic, is it unusual? Is it ordinary or is it expensive? It's unusual. Very good. It is unusual. If something is exotic, it is definitely not ordinary and price doesn't have anything to do with it. It's unusual. So they say the flavorful sauce packs a punch with exotic combination of spices. So they have an unusual combination of spices, which makes it better than anybody else's. All right, so now we're going to look at the rest of the questions. OK, so this is figurative language, which they which remember in our first discussion this week in listening and speaking, we we spoke about how important it is to get someone's attention by how we say something and through words and slogans. And with where with that, the way of doing that is using figurative language. OK, so let's look at number seven, which expression doesn't mean the same as knock your socks off. So did you choose injure you, amaze you, or thrill you? If someone says, it will knock your socks off, what do you think they're saying? That is right. They are saying it will amaze you, it will thrill you. So the opposite is injure you. Okay, so that would be the opposite. Question eight, what does it mean to quit something called turkey? So if someone, I'm going to give you an example that you may be able to relate to as you may have actually heard it somewhere. All right. If someone says, um, I'm going to stop eating chocolate cold turkey. Or I'm going to stop eating junk food. I'm going to go cold turkey. What do you think they're trying to say? Now, it actually has nothing to do with the turkey, by the way. It has nothing to do with the bird. It means to stop a habit quickly and for good. So it's an expression. It's figurative language. OK, so you stop a bad, generally it's a bad habit for good. OK, so they are trying to imply that once you try their pizza, you'll stop eating anybody else's pizza immediately for something better. What does it mean to have an open mind about something? So if you have an open mind about something, if I have an open mind about the new shopping town that's opening, even though I might not like the fact that they sell sour worms, I might like have an open mind and pop in there anyway. So I'm talking about a sweet, so I'm just making that up. 
So let's see. It would be to change, willing to change your opinion. So maybe if you have an open mind about something and you give, it's basically give something a chance. Try something. Give it a chance. It might just work. You might just enjoy it. It might be better than what you thought it was. Okay. The last one, what does it mean if a sauce packs a punch? It means it's very spicy, so packs a punch. Punch, we all know, is like an immediate effect. So when you taste the food, you can feel it immediately. You can feel the combination of spices immediately. It's very spicy. So well done, grade sevens. You did good today. And that is why we approach our comprehensions. Now, if we were given an information text, if we go look at a different kind of advert now, what you see here is just very small adverts of different things. OK, there's a pair of sunglasses, there's camera, there's jackets, there's footwear. All right, so today we're going to try and teach you a bit about comparisons how to compare one thing to another. And then we'll, with it, we have the customer reviews. This is where the comprehension comes in. OK, now I haven't given, we're not going to do all of them. I've only chosen two that we are going to do together because we will, would not have time to do all of them. So I chose fancy fantasy sunglasses. Every person should have one of these during the summer. Resilient footwear, footwear, apologies, mountain hikers, even tells you which shoe is right and which is left. Um, and they give you an online store that you can go to. And then we have the reviews. Now a review is what is written by a customer. If they like something or if they don't like something. Okay, so let's read this one from Rashid. And he's talking about the footwear, the resilient footwear. And I see it's given it five stars, so it must be great quality. Let's read what he says. I had never worn any hiking boots before until two weeks ago when my friends and I decided to climb Mount Kanabu. Because they really helped me to climb over rocky hills and walk on rough terrain. Although mountain hikers are more expensive than rainforest explorers, so they're actually talking about the two types of footwear, the boots are really comfortable and water resistant. Rainforest explorers are lighter and less expensive. Those who love hiking and jungle tracking should buy at least one pair of these boots. OK, so that is the review. They obviously really, really are impressed with these shoes. They've given it five stars and they compare, they actually compare the two shoes and they seem to be impressed with them both. And this is from someone who's never worn hiking boots before. So he has nothing else to compare it to. Let's look at the next review about the sunglasses. There's three stars there. Best sunglasses ever. Since I needed more than one pair of sunglasses, I ordered both Fabulous Ray and Fame Violet. I must say that I love both of them. It is hard to say which one is better because Fabulous Ray sunglasses are resistant to scratches and have longer durability, while Fame Violet sunglasses are light and fashionable. I guess each one has its own advantages. I recommend you to buy both especially when you go out often in the sunlight. OK, so that's the review with regard to the fancy fantasy sunglasses. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a table and we're going to put the different adverts in the correct part. So we're going to separate their brand and different things like that. Let me actually show you the table so that you know what I'm talking about. OK, so I'll put the ads there just so it's easy to refer to. OK, so this is the table that we're going to do. You can draw it yourself 
or I will put it up on a worksheet. So we have the brand. This is what we do when we compare. OK, so it's a comprehensive activity in the sense that you've got to be able to search for information. You've got to be able to find the information. And you've got obviously got to understand what you're reading and what you're looking for to be able to identify them. All right, so you have the brand. You have the type of product, its advantages, its price, and the reviewer. OK, so if we had to look at just, we, I will show you the reviews in a moment, so we're not going to look at them just yet. Let's just focus on the brand at the moment. So what would be the brand of the glasses and what would be the brand of the shoes? So you can type that up or write it down. Either way is good. What type of product is it? So the first ad at the top, what type of product is it? So what is it advertising? And what type of product is the second one? And it's not the same thing as the brand. They might have similar words in them, but they're not the same thing. Can you remember from reading the previous review what the advantages are of the first ad and what the advantages are of the second ad. So I'm going to give you a minute just to have a look at that and jot that down because the advantages you might need to think a bit more, write a bit more. And then we have, they're asking the price. So where would you find the price? And what would the price be? OK, so now if we go back, I just want you to look at the reviewer. What are the names of the reviewer of the boots and what is the name of the reviewer of the glasses? Very good. So Rashid is the reviewer of the sunglasses and Vanessa of the shoes. Right, before we refer back to this worksheet, I want to show you the next one. Yeah, we have the reviews again. Now we have a different table, okay, which is requiring a little bit more of explanation. I've given you an example there. They want the name of the product and brand, which you did on the previous worksheet. So that would be easy enough to complete. The recommendation. Now, they don't want you to write the entire review. You've got to be able to simplify it in one sentence. For example, if the product was urban shoes, you can use shoe, these shoes for any event formal dinner, sports, competitions, or parties. That's an example. It's one sentence, and it gets its recommendation across. Same with the one about the cell phone, a QB smartphone. You should try the smartphone because it's most energy efficient phone. Now, the review of that is probably a whole paragraph. However, the recommendation, they just give you a short sentence. So if you had to look at this information from Rashid and the information from Vanessa, how would you simplify that and give a recommendation? You could even use a, some, a sentence from the text to give a recommendation on it. And actually, the second one actually gives you a clue as to which sentence you can use. OK, so let's go back and have a look. All right, so when you look at the brand, yes, you do look at the top of the ad. 
they have the brand at the top. They also, if you look at the shoe advert, they have the brand within the, in the website address. OK, so the first brand is Fabulous Fantasy Sunglasses. Oopsie, what did I do there? Sorry, ladies and gents. And then the second brand would be Resilient Footwear. What type of product is it? That's right. The first product is sunglasses and the second product is footwear. Very good. Advantages. What would be the advantages? Do you remember from the review? So if we look at the review, the hiking boots, the advantages is that they are water resistant. I think that's a, that makes sense to me. They are lighter. The one pair is lighter and less expensive. The other pair that's expensive is water resistant and comfortable. So in advantages, you would write water resistant and comfortable. If, remember, it's a table. We're not writing sentences as such. Let's look at the advantages of the sunglasses. So it says the one pair is resistant to scratches and the other pair is light and fashionable. So I'm just going to take some key words then and then under advantages for sunglasses, I would write durable or fashionable or resistant to scratches. Okay. The price is on the left hand side. If you look at the sunglasses, it says 65 and 45. And for the shoes, it's 110 and 95. You can, you don't need to write RM. You can just use the R for and. Okay, and the reviewer, that's their name. So remember, Rashid was the reviewer for resilient footwear, and Vanessa was the reviewer for the sunglasses. Now to go over our actual reviews. OK, so let's check your work. This ad is referring to. Which product? Do you remember? Yes, resilient footwear. OK, and this ad. Now, if you wanted to write instead of if we go back and we write fancy fantasy and resilient footwear, you can do that. Or you can use break it up a little bit and you can for number one, you can write both rainforest explorers and mountain hikers as the product. And for sunglasses, you can write fabulous ray and fame violet. In there as well. OK, recommendation It's going to be a very short and sweet sentence. Very good. If you look at the sunglasses one, it actually says at the bottom, I recommend you to buy both, especially when you go out often in sunlight. All right, so why? She says I recommend you buy it. So it is a good recommendation, but why? OK, so I recommend you to buy both sunglasses as they are resilient durable and fashionable. Or you can actually stick to one sentence. You can say, I recommend you to buy fabulous Ray sunglasses because they are resistant to scratches and have longer durability. You can actually focus on just the one. For the shoe one, you can do the same. You can say, I re recommend these this footwear actually I recommend this footwear for those who love hiking and jungle jungle tracking that could be nice and simply put as well okay so this is how we answer comprehensions of an advert okay so it's very very I'm sure you found the task very easy and simple to do tomorrow we are going to be working on writing. So this is going to be nice and fun because this is when you bring your paper and you bring your colors and we actually design our own advert. So that is going to be very, very exciting. So I want you to actually start thinking about it this evening 
and tomorrow during the day and just think of how can you create an, an advert that is attractive, that is persuasive, that grabs attention, okay? And we are going to do the planning process for it. For with any writing activity, even if it's making a poster or designing an advert, there has to be a planning process. Okay, so please join me for tomorrow so that we can do that and follow us on social media. I hope you all participated in the Q&As today. It was really awesome what you did yesterday. I was so proud of you guys and I look forward to it at the end of every lesson to go and look and see how you participated and look at your ideas. And this is where you can send us any pictures of what you've done, any examples, anything interesting that you want to share with us or any of your work. We would love to see it. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and I look forward to see you tomorrow. We're going to do some exciting writing. <laughs>